So in the last video, we looked at what Hobbes thinks life would be like in the state of nature, that is, in a condition in which there's no government. And he thinks it would be pretty awful. He thinks that there would be competition, distrust, a struggle for glory, a struggle to constantly dominate one another. And as a result, uh, life would be pretty miserable, solitary, poor, nasty, brutish, and short. In this video, we're going to look at a few objections Hobbes considers to his claim and what he says in response. So here's the first objection, and this is basically going to be the constant objection. Why I think the state of nature would be like that? Why I think Hobbes is characterizing accurately? And, you know, one way people sometimes put this objection is Hobbes seems to think that people are pretty miserable creatures without any predisposition to get along. Why I think we're really so bad? And Hobbes' first reply is this. He says, if you're going to raise this objection, you should look at yourself, at the way you choose to live life. When taking a long journey, you arm yourself and seek to go well accompanied. Now, this doesn't hold so much these days. Most of us probably don't arm ourselves and seek to go well accompanied when taking journeys. Um, I've taken many long journeys all over the place, and I've never armed myself or sought to go well accompanied and uh, never had any problems for it. Um, but most people do lock their doors when they're asleep, and some people do even lock their valuables within their house. Um, and what Hobbes says is when you do that, when you lock your doors when you leave your house or go to sleep or you lock your car door or whatever, or when you lock your valuables in a chest in your house, don't you condemn others by your action in the way, thinks Hobbes, that I do by my words. So Hobbes' idea is, look, I, Hobbes, say that people would beat at each other's throats if there were no government to enforce rules. But when you lock your doors, you're saying, I believe or expect people to steal from me if I don't lock my doors, even though there is a government that's ready to punish people who violate the law, people who steal from me, and so on. So really, I must think pr people are pretty miserable creatures given that I lock my doors. That's the first reply. The second reply is this. He says there are actually some places where there is no government, and in those places, it is a war of all against all. So this is an empirical claim, a claim about what the facts about our world are. He's saying the facts are that where there is no government, people do live exactly the way I've described. And the example he gives is this. He says, for the savage people in many places of America, except the government of small families, um, and he says they get along because there's some sort of natural inclination for small families to get along, um, they have no government at all, and they live the way that I've described before. Now, let's test this claim and see if Hobbes is right. So this is Christopher Columbus. Um, here is a passage from Columbus's diary written shortly after he first arrived uh, uh, in the Americas. He describes the people saying that they are so naive and so free with their possessions that no one who has not witnessed them would believe it. Well, that doesn't very sound very much like the state of nature that Hobbes describes. When you ask for something they have, they never say no. Well, that sounds even less like the state of nature that Hobbes describes. It doesn't sound like there's competition, distrust, a struggle for glory and domination. And even if there are some elements of those things, it doesn't seem like it's leading to a war of all against all. Uh, Columbus continues, to the contrary, they offer to share with anyone. They brought us parrots and balls of cotton and spears and many other things, which they exchanged for glass beads and hawk's bells. They willingly traded everything they owned. They were well built with good bodies and handsome features. They don't bear arms and don't know of them, for I showed them a sword and they took it by the edge and cut themselves of ignorance. They have iron. Their spears are made of cane. They would make fine servants. With 50 men, we could subjugate them all and make them do whatever we want. Now, this is a nice passage because it illustrates two things. One, it illustrates that Hobbes is wrong about what the state of nature would be like. So insofar as... Uh, people in the Americas are in the state of nature. Now, maybe he's wrong about that. He thinks they're in the state of nature. Maybe they're not really. But insofar as they are in the state of nature, um, Hobbes is wrong about what the state of nature would be like because they're not living in the war of all against all. That's the first thing it illustrates. The second thing it illustrates is that uh, Hobbes's thinking about how people relate to one another seems to be embodied to some extent by Columbus because Columbus, uh, you know, his first thought seems to be Look, they get along well, they're great, they'll be easy to dominate and use as slaves. Okay, um, the final reply Hobbes makes is that in intergovernment rivalry, we are in a state of nature and it is more or less a war of all against all. 
And here he can point to what these days is called political realism, which is the view that nations, there is no morality in international affairs, and the responsibility of any nation in international affairs is just to advance it, the, its own national interest. And uh, this, to some extent, does seem how international affairs plays out, although it doesn't seem like there's exactly a war of all against all, or at least uh, not constant, incessant war everywhere, as Hobbes, it seems, would have predicted. Okay, so let's stop the objection replies there, and we'll start next time by talking about uh, Hobbes' transition from the claim that there would be a war of all against all in the state of nature to the conclusion that we need government. Uh, I want you to see straight away that, that, that I, I want you to see right now that doesn't follow trivially because you may say, look, in the war, in the state of nature, there would be a war of all against all. And that's a good way to live. Let's live like that. I know life would be nasty, brutish and short, but I'd rather have that than the alternative, which is government. So we'll stop this video there and continue next time by looking at how we transition to the claim that we should have a government, given that we would be in a war of all against all in the state of nature.